everyone. Welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesday, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux, open source, and pretty much anything else we find interesting. I'm Vin, that is Jill, and over there is Pedro Mateus, and everyone watching this Hello. live on Twitch before <laughs> and after the fact. How's it going, man? We got a lot to talk about this week. I've been busy. I've been hard at work. I've been playing around with all of the DLSS things this week. This is kind of fun. For me, it's very novel. If you're unfamiliar with that, um, what is it? Fidelity FX is the open source version that AMD has released. Pedro, you've played yes. around with that a couple of times. It mm. basically allows Proton you- Proton G, you could FSR yeah. all the things. It's amazing. <laughs> allows you to cheat. You know, you got a lower powered graphics card and you want to play at higher resolutions and- Mm-hmm. Well, you know, you can't really go out and buy a graphics card these days, so it's a great technology to have in NVIDIA, you know, doing NVIDIA's way of things. Like, we have a closed source thing that uses, which I thought something I'd never get to use on this little 2060. Uh, they made it work with Proton, so I went and just played around with it. And it's great um, that we can use it now on Linux, I guess, for games that it's enabled. But what I've really been busy doing is, is anyone familiar with Wheel of Time? Have you heard about it? Yeah, I've heard of the name. I haven't watched it yet. Because <laughs> it's not out yet. There's probably a connection. Yeah. Um, ah, okay. Amazon, the trailer then. <laughs> Amazon's <laughs> released a trailer for it, and I'm kind of starving for some fantasy stuff or something to watch at this point in life. I'm like, come on. And yeah. um, I, I missed out on The Witcher. I, I didn't know anything about The Witcher outside of like I played the uh, third game when the, um, you know Superman Witcher came out on Netflix. I'm like, well, all right. Then I went back and read the books. And I'm ready for series two of The Witcher. I'm like, yeah, I can be that guy. I'm like, ah, that's different. That's wrong. And well, I didn't want to miss out that on that opportunity for Wheel of Time. So I've been going back and um, listening to the Wheel of Time series so I can uh, appreciate it. I don't know. I, I, I nice. What, what are you, What are your thoughts on that? Because you don't, that doesn't always lead to appreciation. Sometimes I found it infinitely better to go and kind of like. Why is everyone else angry? That's a perfectly good TV series. Like, but it's moderately <laughs> or slightly book. different than this other thing Oops. that happened in the front <laughs> and the source. Yeah. Can't do that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Vin, Steve and I just watched the trailer yesterday. It was um, on uh, YouTube. Uh, it's one of the ads on YouTube. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the thing. Pedro, you spent... 20 quid on a box Ten. that <laughs> 10 <laughs> <laughs> it was literally 10 pounds when you're done with it i guarantee you, you have 20 trick. quid in it <laughs> more than that <laughs> i mean yeah i put my own ram and my own ssd in it so it's already worth more but um no i only paid 10 pounds for a hp um touch smart 300 which came with an Athlon uh, 2X2 235E. And um, yeah, it fought me a little bit. It absolutely did. The um, Everything worked fine except for the touchscreen. And I kind of wanted the touchscreen because I wanted to turn it into a media center, like mm-hmm. a little kiosk type of situation. Like there so, we go. yes. <laughs> and um, I eventually succeeded after spending a... Mm-hmm great deal of time and having to sacrifice at least two chickens i, I it's lucky enough that it was full moon the other day so i, I just sacrificed two chickens on a full moon you, i am tired of you excusing your chicken chicken sacrificing man You're like it's always always something i'm like why did you sacrifice i mean that i chicken? turned them into nuggets afterwards so there's that the- <laughs> It's just getting ridiculous the, at this point. Just, just admit it. You like sacrificing chickens. Man. <laughs> yes, I do like me some chicken. But uh, yeah, no, the drivers for the next window touchscreen are basically non-existent in the kernel. And uh, if there's anyone left at Canonical or uh, Debian who doesn't ate my guts, please, please, oh, please um, package the next window touchscreen driver, please. It, it, it's called NW for me, like the 500 and 600 NVIDIA cards, that series, NW for me. So, yeah, thank you. Very much appreciate it, don't. because I don't want anyone else to go through what I, I had to. No, <laughs> buy a mouse, hippie. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. 
Well, I guess he does have long hair, so he is considered a hippie. (laughs) 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 How about you, Joe? (laughs) (laughs) I had actually a great time at DesignerCon last Saturday. It was a it's a convention for artists and artists that do the the kind of work like Tokidaki and um, Giant Robot and some of like the vinyl dolls and and unique artwork that's very science fiction and surreal and beautiful. And this was one of the first conventions you could attend in person here in SoCal since the pandemic. And, you know, they required vaccination, which I was really happy about. I wouldn't have gone unless they had. (laughs) So I was happy about that. But we had a great time there. And the next two days I'm off to Disneyland again. So I'm looking forward to that for our (laughs) monthly a short vacation. <laughs> How many more months of monthly short vacations Disneyland do you got stored up? You'll have to ask Steve husband about that, about, about that. Actually, <laughs> I have a year, but I'm going to be renewing after a year. So. <laughs> so it's up to you, Steve. It's up to you. Um, yeah, no, I'll be going regardless. <laughs> Steve husband. <laughs> last week we talked about um, a little thing that was going on. A little bit of internet drama and Gnome kind of came out and they're like, Yo, we want to start a little internet slap fight in System 76. In like, the worst possible yo. way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, and like non-editorialized recap of that. Uh, no one was complaining about System 76 not contributing to Upstream. That was kind of the gist of it. Part of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a part of it. The The other one was that a lot of people from System 76 were going on social media and making it sound like it was everything was Gnome's fault. And uh, that it, it was considered misinformation by the author of said post. Well, System 76 has decided, you know mm-hmm. what? Let's just shut some people up <laughs> right at the top of the thing. Here's everything that we've contributed back upstream, specifically for the GNOME project. And that is the proverbial slap in the face that GNOME needed after they, um, I mean, that one developer Tell was allowed to post this imaginary that. world where GNOME cares. <laughs> it's just whoever is in charge of any kind of PR at GNOME should have looked at that post and went, take that down, please. So, yeah, no, uh, but they didn't. So here we go. It's basically System76 going. Yes, we have contributed a lot of stuff back to the GNOME project. We've improved a lot of stuff that the GTK framework currently offers. We've uh, upstreamed about as much as they could from what I could tell, which is a lot. That 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 is not a, an insignificant amount of contributions, especially considering, you know, the other operating system. <laughs> it's, that's very good. That is the best response that could have come out of it. So good job, System76. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty interesting to look Absolutely. through, man. Um, but yeah, go back and read both the post yourself. Uh, there's a link to it and the show notes if you want to check it out after the fact, because I'm not going to get into the, um, like, th- it serves no purpose to internet slap fights. Like, both projects are doing their own yeah. things. Now everything's cleared yeah. up. Everybody said their piece. So just get out there and make something awesome. <laughs> it's kind of where I'm at with yep. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm not picking teams on this one. <laughs> no. And, you know, System 76 does amazing work for the Linux community, you know, from their contributions to GTK, to REST, to NVIDIA, to open firmware, to core boot, all the way to the Linux kernel itself. And to me, one of the most important contributions System76 has made is that they have grown the Linux community with their awesome software and hardware. So kudos to System76. It's awesome. Fine Corinthian wood grain PCs. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> I, I will Rocky admit, I, I do kind of want a Helio, but I, I don't, yeah. that price want it. That's, no. <laughs> Patron's afraid of quality. I'm afraid of uh, four digits <laughs> when it comes to a PC. That, that's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> so we got some updates for the Pine Phone, and I'm kind of excited about one particular piece of kit. This is a November update, and what we're looking at on the video oh, version is a keyboard for nice. your Pine Phone Pro. 
neat because that, that just straight up gives you a portable Linux machine that you can carry around. Not crazy powerful, but then you get the keyboard and you get the monitor using it as a phone with all the guts built in. Now, there's another thing that I thought Pedro might be very excited about. Uh, <laughs> there is, uh, absolutely, because Pedro, you have the pine time. I do. And you picked it up. And they are adding step data tracking for the pine time. So you can work on like minimizing the amount of steps that you take from that chair into the kitchen every day. <laughs> here's the thing um yeah. they already had the step counter on the phone it. but <laughs> yeah you couldn't really synchronize it so what they're um yeah. what they're giving you now is the ability to synchronize it with the third-party apps that you use to sync with your phone or with your laptop so that that's that's good and yeah that keyboard and the pine phone pro that's that's a really good proposition in fact it's so good that the developer devices are, are going to be going out soon and they had to stop the pre-orders because they were so popular that everyone was getting one so yeah people very much like what pine is selling so good job pine one of the things good i'm also excited around. about i was showing in the video was the um the little module the is it rock chip based i believe right uh, oh, yeah. That's, uh, yes. That'll fit onto the, the Raspberry Pi yeah. compute box. You know, it's a drop in replacement. Ports. And they also have like blade boards that you could put into a rack, Yeah, the blade board is cool. Which is very <laughs> interesting. Uh, the SO quartz. And they wanted to make a thing, you know, when this announcement, like, hey, we released that last month, everyone. And those come in eight gigabyte variants. So you kind of get my attention on that, especially when you have a board with a um, PCIe by one slot. I'm like, hmm. I could. Probably make a very, very interesting uh, portable jackbox with something like that. Oh, absolutely. And an another thing I'm excited about with the Pine Time, <laughs> me and Pedro love our Pine Times. I've been using mine a lot <laughs> with the step counter, is uh, a feature many people have requested for the Pine Time, which was just released with the version um, 1.7.0 of InfiniTime is now you can set the date and time without having to use the companion app. So that's awesome because a, a lot of people had issues with, with doing that. I, I had no problem doing it and I know Pedro didn't, but it, it, it there is issues sometimes with the apps communicating with the Pine Time. So <laughs> it wasn't was even cool. that. It was just the like, okay, so you got yourself. A uh, not a phone, but a watch. Yeah. You pull your watch <laughs> out of the brand new packaging, what you got it from, and then you turn it on and it just says zero, zero. Yeah. It's like, yeah. okay, do I have a way <laughs> to change this? No. Oh, you have to synchronize it with Bluetooth with or with it, either with your phone <laughs> or with your uh, computer. Um. Okay, I get that this is a smart watch, but this is a pretty dumb smart watch if I can't just yeah, you know, tell the time. It doesn't tell the time. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking too, Pedro. So yeah, no, it, it for I I gave him a pass because you know twenty five dollars that right. these things cost. Yeah. It's, okay, and it's still uh, it's, in development. It synchronizes with the phone. Yeah, it synchronizes with the phone. That's fine. I'm always gonna have my phone on me anyway, so fine. But. Yeah, that that should have been there from the start. I, I want you to roll it back a little bit. I mean, who really has a a, a smartwatch to tell time? <laughs> <laughs> That's what that one does. I guess everyone uses their phones. Use the pi the Pine phone instead. Come on, man! Clocks are an invention by the Swiss for people with lazy minds. You keep track of up here, man. But I love the convenience of you know having a an old fashioned watch. Oh. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> You count them just like <laughs> nanoseconds, but slower. Morby's <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Angel. Oh, this is just, it's its really convenient having, you know, the pine time and, and how inexpensive it was. Wow. <laughs> well, even the pine awesome. phone pro and it's is so not well built. Ridiculously expensive by any stretch yeah, of the imagination. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. For the hardware that is in it and the that particular price. form factor. Yeah. yeah. That's that's a good price. It's, yeah. it's a bit expensive. It would have been the most expensive phone I ever bought if I ever decide to get one. Mm -hmm. But it it's it's a it is a Pinebook Pro in a phone form factor. 
right. That's what it is. And you slap the <laughs> keyboard on it and you get a very interesting little device that you can just keep in your yeah. pocket. It's a netbook pro. Do you think you'll be able to get Kernel 516 RC1 up and running on it though? It's harm. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. <laughs> so yes, Linux kernel 5.16 release candidate one is out with a very important memory management update as well as lots more hardware support. Awesome. So 5.16 will introduce memory folios, which is a memory management system that aims to allow file systems and the page cache to manage memory in larger chunks than page underscore size. And it has been shown to improve workloads, such as building the Linux kernel, of up to a 10% performance increase. That's a big deal. And that's going to help your system overall in the future. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, and like I said, there's tons of more hardware support in the upcoming final release, including mainline support for the Raspberry Pi 4 compute module, more Apple M1 support, RISC-V hypervisor support for KVM, and a whole lot more. Uh, there's just lots of new things coming down the line, and our Linux kernel just keeps getting better and better, and it makes me happy. <laughs> the sheer amount of hardware that it supports out of the box Array for monolithic yeah. kernels. Uh, anyway, the, <laughs> uh, the the big thing about improving the memory management and uh, yeah, like Joel was saying, it's like up to ten percent performance increase just from the memory management alone. If you're dealing with like memory heavy uh, applications like your databases and literally anything else that makes heavy use of paging uh, to memory or literally anywhere on the system it is that's very good because it's not just going to affect that now it's going to create some nice ripples of uh, performance improvements for just about everything because mm -hmm. everything you do requires you to write into ram so if that kind of performance is even for the smaller like paging oh you open the browser there you go it has created that little thing even if it speeds that up yeah that that that's very nice. <laughs> there is a lot to look forward to. Five sixteen RC one introduces some of the else bits, and uh, that um, my buddy Taka yeah. is working on for some Motu devices, some FireWire audio stuff, and I'm very excited to see that. Mainly because there's the slimmest chance of me being able to pull this back and getting everything set up to test it out. But um, currently, I think if you're doing anything like everything in the studio. Was like locked in at 510 because like as soon as you even pedro found out like things start getting squirrely at 514 and after because there's major changes mm -hmm. being done to the audio stack now if you just get like a usb you know sound interface you know glorified sound card with an excellent you're going to be fine but um dealing with some other stuff that's got some tighter timings there there still be some dragons so do keep that in mind but definitely get out there and play with it uh, always good oh. to see one of the yes, most don't exciting use it in features. <laughs> yeah, one of the most <laughs> exciting things. I was so happy when I looked at the uh, Linux kernel blog, the that Linus put out is that there are actually some Motorola 68K updates, which means more support for Linux on my vintage computer hardware, like my Atari computers, Amigas, and some of my Macs. So I was really happy to see <laughs> that they're still contributing to the code for <laughs> M68K. That makes me, me sit back and wondering, like, what is still in production running Linux using a 68K? Like, well, realistically, it's not for yeah. vintage computers at all. Nobody. Yeah, no, like, I know. Well, you know, the SOC, there's some SOC boards for uh, teaching kids uh, computers. And um, some of them have uh, 68K on them. And uh, yeah, I, I have there's heard there's some There's quite a few hobbyist projects yeah. around the 68K, mm -hmm. including that yeah. one about the semi, uh, uh, like, post-apocalypse and how you could get computing uh, on a 68K device, like a Mega Drive or something. Yeah. I think having that kind of support in the kernel is... Interesting? Uh, yeah. <laughs> interesting. I was going to say important, but interesting, I oh, think, I is mean, more apt. 
<laughs> uh, what I'm thinking of, feel free to write into the show. Let us know if you're like, I know the thing, because there's got to be something that is still actively being used in, you know, some type of manner for that support to still be there. Always yeah. curious. But, Pedro, you are known for your design choices. And your <laughs> <own>. <laughs> no, but I did... Uh, choose to date a person who is far, far more talented than I'll ever be <laughs> when it comes to the graphical arts. Uh, though she, well, she's bought into that particular uh, platform, which shall not be addressed. Let's just say it costs a lot of money a month. The This one, on the other hand, no, this one is entirely uh, open source, and it's being developed by the um, Kaleidos open source team which they've already put out uh, quite a few projects. But uh, there's an FAQ. It'll be linked in the uh, in the show notes. And it's PenPod. Hmm. And I, I started going through the GitHub. And it's like, okay, PenPod is the first open source design and prototyping platform meant for cross-domain teams. Non-dependent on operating systems, PenPod is web-based and works with open standards SVG by default. It's like, oh, Okay, is someone finally taking a crack at uh, making ink- Inkscape with a better or modern UI? Maybe, perhaps, <laughs> or am I dreaming here? Because that that's what it sounds uh-huh. like to me, and I I'm very much on board with that. Because the two times that I've cracked open Inkscape for something, I immediately forget how to do things because it's not. It's your, it's your brain trying to defend itself. Trust me. I know these feels. <laughs> it's not intuitive <laughs> at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, Pedro hadn't used a Corel Draw back in the day. <laughs> nope. <laughs> but, no. Uh, no, but uh, Inkscape is actually very similar to Corel Draw, which I love. Love that about it. Um, but what's really cool is that this is a UX UI web based collaboration tool. So mm-hmm. you can, you know, work with other other uh, people uh, virtually, which is really awesome. And it's platform independent, of course, because it works using the web browser. So and we need more more of these kind of tools that are, you know, uh, distro and uh, uh, system OS ag- agnostic. Really awesome. And this is a really nice tool for visual designers and developers alike. You know, developers like this because they can they can look at the designs that the the artist has made. So, hmm. yeah, really cool. I mean, to Pedro's point, I mean, if you're not accustomed to like dealing around with, I learned vector dealing with vector graphics in the most cruelest way, mm-hmm. and that was dealing with Macromedia Director and later on Flash. But yeah, no, once mm-hmm. you start, you have to reset your brain when you open up something like Inkscape or like, like oh, all right, this is how we're going <laughs> to do things again. This is neat <laughs> being something that you can do, you know, and collaborate with this. I mean, you can spool this up on S3 or just roll your own and mm-hmm. it's pretty high quality, man. Um, it's yeah. very well done. It's like everything. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Just interface. looking at the screenshots and looking at the little animations that they have. That's really well done. Very nice. <laughs> open source and it's free, so you better watch out. Slobs might show up and be like, uh, oh, oh no. <laughs> You know, I just realized that Penpot kind of reminds me of a combination of Quark Express from back in the day and Corel Draw. It's it's got a little bit of both in there. <laughs> ah yes. The bad old times. That's uh Yeah. <laughs> man. Uh so I did a thing, maybe you've Heard of it. Uh, speaking of OBS, uh, man, we all saw that I, go down. <laughs> so, uh. it was, slobs finally. They just, you, just, you, you always look at situations like this. And, like, you just got too greedy. You did. You did. You, you, you just went too far and they finally just lifted something that started this ball rolling or <laughs> even OBS team was like, Hey man, slobs has got a long history. Streamlabs OBS. If you're curious, not affiliated with OBS whatsoever. OBS team way back in the day even went, Hey, don't use our name. You're know, like, nah, we're going to do it. Then we're going to try to trademark it uh, because we're slobs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What, what uh, site did they lift wholesale? Pedro? Uh, it was, Oh God, I mentioned it earlier and I can't remember. That's why I asked the- you. 
<laughs> <laughs> oh, and, it and slops the... for every everyone out there is Streamlabs OBS. <laughs> Yeah, uh, let's see. I <laughs> found it earlier. Let me. Err. So there was this other site, and Slobs is just like one of their pages they were working on, just like copy pasted and changed out some graphics. And uh, they finally got called on it, which has led to this ball of. By he, everyone. Yeah, even Elgato <laughs> showed up and they're like, yeah. Uh, yeah. They do that. They named their uh, mobile app uh, Stream. Uh, what was it? Stream Deck. <laughs> Smooth. Smooth and uh, that's that's uh, Lightstream. Light they stream. lifted basically the entire uh, GUI from Lightstream for their new console um, offering, mm-hmm. effectively. And Lightstream <laughs> started by it's like, "Hey, can I copy your homework?" Immediately calling them out on it, and then everyone else, including people partnered with uh, Streamlabs, went, "You better start explaining." And they have not had a very good explanation. They're going to have to do some radio silence <laughs> on that because Slob just entered into partnership with um recently with Twitch and somebody mm-hmm. at Logitech is going, really? Whose idea was it to buy these Yahoo's last year? Um, <laughs> what, what went down? This is not going to be pretty, but back to the origin of this. You probably want to use OBS. Maybe you're new to Linux and you want to find out how does this work? Because this is going to be different. Either that or what you can do is you can just install Linux, try to set everything up yourself without doing any research, fail horribly, possibly make a YouTube video about it, um, explaining like, like I should have been able to figure this out. Window splaining, literally window splaining Linux to <laughs> <Wind> people. <laughs> this, this is our thing now. Yeah, we're gonna have a shirt this time next week. Wind splaining um, <laughs> about how you've done no research and you know your years and years and years of clicking on ne- next buttons very accurately had prepared you to tackle an entirely different operating system. <laughs> it, less shock, it didn't. So I'm trying to help you out trying to help you out mm-hmm. i've created a first time setup for obs linux and i'm i was talking in discord earlier um this month and last month like how far back do i pull and i i went all the way back like okay we're going to start out with an audio interface a web camera and a microphone and get your audio level set up get your web suit look we just installed the webcam drivers welcome to linux guys um <laughs> speaking of logitech and just some basic <laughs> stuff up to and, uh, you know, setting up Pavu control because you're going to be dealing with that. Um, Pipewire still got some work to be done and you're really only going to be running that in certain installations, where to get OBS, how to get it installed, how out of luck you are if you have a Chromebook. You're welcome, OBS <laughs> dev team. And um, <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> how to do all this, you know, what's your output settings, how to set up your audio the way I set up my audio, which I'm trying to teach you good habits and I'm going to walk you through setting up your first basic scene, adding audio to that scene, setting up your webcam, and how to capture a game. So, you know, just some basic tip. Look at ah, uh, look at that. I look Canadian. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Was that uh, too much Jordan and Sandy for two weeks in a row? <laughs> Could have been, man. Could have been. I'm gonna, <laughs> I, I mean, at least we don't, at least our Canadians are malfunctioning. So I'm not in danger of apologizing anytime soon. <laughs> Um, and yeah, of course, uh, capturing a Vulcan game and, uh, setting up alerts and all, all the fun stuff. Look at our beautiful party patrons. There they are. And, uh, yeah, go check it out. It's there. That's one of the things uh, I've been doing for 10 years, man. Just why I, I face palm so hard. And I always have a very strong opinion when somebody comes out and it's like, Linux doesn't work. I'm like you didn't even, what are you talking about? Try. Audio doesn't work on Linux. I yeah, do. even <laughs> even old audio interfaces that aren't made for Windows <laughs> or, or work on Win- or Mac uh, work on Linux. So mm-hmm. it's a thing, and Ven is proving that to the world. <laughs> and one of the things that uh, Ven brought up in the video, which uh, rightly so, and calling out everyone else who's done the video like that before, it's like, oh yeah, and what volume level should I be targeting? Should I be setting mm, to actually yeah. be able to? You know, have people listen to me and then you adjust the game based on what you or how loud you sound. Uh, That is the big one because, and yes, Ven does address that and he says, try to target this. There you go. Go watch the video. It is very nice. Uh, And 
No one up to this point has done that. Why? Why? Because <laughs> you, you smash that button, fam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'd think like that is one of the core things. Is why? Why? <laughs> I'm not leaving this planet until I get you set up with proper EQ. <laughs> Fine, I'll install our door and we'll go through it on Saturday. There, there's nothing to go through. <laughs> you don't need it for these streams. I got you working back here, baby. You need it for your yes, streams. For my I, streams. I, 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 I'm trying I to help you. Pedro <laughs> self improvement with this kid. Is <laughs> I learned the hard way. <laughs> oh. It is a fight. Uh, but yeah, you saw all the beautiful patrons uh, rolling through in the credits. That's where I threw them in. I'm like, hey, these people are helping out. If you want to become one of them, head over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We got some tiers, rewards, and a bunch of cool stuff. It's throwing your way if you can help us out. If not, that's cool. Come hang out with us. We got IRC that's always live. Um, like, subscribe, share the show, and all that fun stuff. But if you're a patron, we do have a Discord that uh, we hang out the other six days a week. It is way more active than most Discords that I join, which I always found odd. An eclectic group of misfits. There's, uh, we even have Windows <laughs> users that come hang out with us. So don't worry about like, oh, you're going to be mean. No, no, not at all. Mm-mm. Not at no. all. And uh, we got a bonus show that we do as a thank you to anybody um, who's going to make that commitment to uh, the pre pre super shows. And that it's kind of like our slice of life community, you know, what we're watching, what's going on behind the scenes stuff that go on here. And I always put out early access to videos like the OBS video. Like, Hey, everyone take a look at this. Let me know what you think. Do you have any additional questions? Then we'll push it out. And we have an uncut series. If you like this, you're like, this is pretty good background music. Maybe you want it in podcast form. You get a custom RSS feed with patron where we uh, throw up the podcast live and uncut series. But Jill, I remembered to say we have some people to thank this week. Yeah, <laughs> you did. <laughs> so we have a new patron, Beastwick. Yay. Thanks, Thank Witch. you, Beastwick. <laughs> We've been <laughs> enjoying having you in chat. And, uh, and Foxdog uh, sent us a game. He sent me a game. He inflicted me. Um, Fox awesome. likes to do that. It's like <laughs> I, I was playing around with the DLSS stuff as I was mentioning at the beginning of the show, and he's like, uh, "I know another game that's got this. Play the Cyber Truck or whatever it's called. I, um, the, you know, <laughs> the one where like Keanu Reeves oh, is yeah, Optimus the, Prime or something. I, I forget that Cyber that Truck game exists. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like oh, the new buggy one, right? Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> so um, maybe maybe I'll be testing some of that out but thank you very much um for helping us out and um but yeah beastwick was uh trying to get the because if you sub to us on twitch it'll pop you into our super secret discord where we're all hanging out and that was just not working for some reason so um happy. beastwick was like flip table it's like yeah patreon Boom, <laughs> synced right in so that's pretty nice. neat. uh <laughs> if you want to this is a horrible idea, but we always do it for fun. We got little Amazon wish list. If you want to pick up for something, uh, here we can take a look at. Clearly, this is Pedro's. Um, <laughs> yes, <Our> penguins. <laughs> Hello, Stuff my name penguins. is Joel Bryant. <laughs> ooh, ooh, look at that light up one. I like the light up one. This one on top. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that that that's got LEDs in it. Yep. I yeah. <laughs> torch that thing so quick. Um, <laughs> hey, <look. laughs> Ooh, uh, SSD. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. And it's gone bucks. up in price. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I bought those when they were like $19. Yeah. yeah $20 I, for 240 gig. Those were nice. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I grabbed a bunch of them because I use them in my old machines. They're perfect. Uh, both so of the boxes that you guys are on down here have those. I'm like, what? $20? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Why not? They're getting SSDs. Get an upgrade. Pedro's got one because he really wants to know about yeah. Aragon. And his eyes. Oh, Ragnar, cool. the accordion. Uh, <laughs> that that sounds fun. Uh, yeah, memory mine cards. is just. Uh, mine is actually sorted by price, so that, that should thing. help you. You can help. <laughs> you can help shave Pedro. <laughs> A hair trimmer. Yeah. You can. You yes. Can. What is this? The adjust- tubular. Oh, you're still doing the lockpick thing. All right. All right. Yes. Uh, I have gotten to the point where the those three test locks that I got, I can open them very, very quickly now. Uh, so yeah, I need to get cause more. one of his computers to spring a leak. Huh? Yeah. Yes, you can. 
Just, you, you can just. There is nothing give like me a water patient hazard. destruction. <laughs> Arthurin knows these feels. Arthurin's like, hey, man, yeah. I, I he, he's increased the chance of a jackbox uh, higher than non-zero that during a show it will spring a leak and torch itself live. So. Yes. <laughs> well done. If you're wondering about this wall back here, this is our wall of fine upstanding cannibals. People have helped out because we are a small, little, tiny operation, and they picked up things for the studio. That's how you uh, win that blame game. There's also like a wish zone. This is stuff I don't use it correctly. It's stuff we're going to be buying for the studio. If you want to help out with that, you get your name back here. Warning: It is expensive. <laughs> it is not. Uh, I don't know what to do. Do anything cheap on here? Sometimes I do. If you catch me on a good day, because I put stuff like wires <laughs> and stuff and then end up buying it. Uh, no. mm -hmm. My SSDs are way more expensive. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> those SSDs are a real price. Yeah. yeah. 379 like, <laughs> All this is like work stuff. Uh, the, the, the switch. Oh, look, it's the Bayonetta machine. That's, that's the <laughs> joke thing, but fortunately it's been out, so I, I've not had a switch show up at the house. Okay, this is what we were talking about in the pre-show. This is how ridiculous the market is right now. It's wow. insane. $868 for the... This is why you're getting a 2060 with 12 gigs, because I was telling Pedro, $868 when the A4000, the new, not last gen, mm -hmm. the current gen, Quadro, is 1600 Because once you're at like that close to 1000 you're like, whatever. Yeah. You're already spending <laughs> damn near four digits, so right that as well. Yeah, just uh, a little hang higher. On. <laughs> hang on as I got I got I gotta go hit F two, then I gotta hit the marker button because Pedro is a big cussy mouth. Um, <laughs> yeah, you oh, did. I used the yeah, D you word. Did. Not that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I keep forgetting that that word is frowned upon yeah. because seriously heretic monster mm. um, <laughs> no <laughs> so uh thanks everybody um for empowering us and giving us the yeah. uh, all the stuff needed to do this all right oh we get a store too store.linuxteamcast.com cover yourself some yes. merch I got stickers and things see so, yeah, I buy my own goods you can cover up Naughty words with slightly less <laughs> naughty ones. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> boys and girls, it is the moment you've been waiting for. The time for a slice of pie. Life mm, short, Texas more pie. Ooh, uh, cherry pie. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, the that's Texas definitely pie. cherry. That, that, that could be like, um, <laughs> I I, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't the know. only thing I can think of is not appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yes. Speaking of which, we have a new version of the Raspberry Pi OS. And it has lots of major changes. And it is now based on Debian 11 Bullseye, our favorite horse from Toy Story. Yay! Run like the wind, Bullseye! <laughs> yeah, yeah! I love, I love Toy Story. So anyways, uh, the desktop and applications have switched to the GTK Plus 3 User Interface Toolkit. That's huge, which will create a cleaner look and feel throughout the OS. And another major change is that the Raspberry Pi OS has a new compositing window manager, Mutter, which replaces the open box window manager from previous Whoops. releases. There we go. Hello. Hi. And <laughs> <laughs> hi, hi, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the Mutter will allow you to have more window effects, such as animations and and shading, um, which are now possible, as well as being Wayland compatible for the future. Yeah, that's right, folks. You never th never thought that your Raspberry Pi would run, run Wayland, but it will probably pretty soon. And But because Mutter uses more system resources, if you don't have a Pi with at least two gigs, um, two gigabytes or more of RAM, the older open box window manager will still be used. And gosh, there's some other major changes. One, there is a new notification manager in the taskbar, like other Linux OSs, and oh, a that new thing update that I always plugin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same here. <laughs> same here, Pedro. <laughs> and there's also a new update plugin that utilizes the new notification system, which provides a graphical way to install updates without needing to use a terminal window. Now now, that is very cool and convenient, but this is a Raspberry Pi, and I really want pe people to learn Terminal on the Raspberry Pi. <laughs> so, 
So, but but an awesome update, nonetheless. No, but Jill, you monster! <laughs> what is your problem? <laughs> I I've had a very large YouTube channel tell me that average people are incapable of using terminals. Oh. <laughs> It's well, only for power users. To, like, good to know you're not a power user then. <laughs> oh, well, tell that to all the kids out there who are using Raspberry Pi for aw- aw- awesome teach, projects. You're teaching them bad learning. habits, Jill. Yeah. <laughs> it, and it <laughs> yeah. is a teaching tool. Yes, absolutely. Give yes. pies to your kids, <laughs> both kinds, and uh, <laughs> teach them how to use a terminal, how to set up their own GUI. It It's a teaching aid and a really good one at that and not terribly expensive. So, yes. I, I do never, uh, like, I really don't. I mean, th- okay, this is a new release of um, Debian 11 on Pi. There's uh, going to be some dragons. I, I've already run into this. I've seen this. Mm. And when I say that, I've seen it from a distance because I'm like, I'm not that dumb. I'm not installing that <laughs> on anything. Um, let me, look, projects I follow. They've changed around some stuff with uh, LibCamera. Well, this is a good thing. Uh, it, it's caused a few projects just completely have to rework things. They've changed that with the GPI open, the outputs and stuff like this. Because I'm kind of on this because I'm getting ready to do a Raspberry Pi video about setting up the cameras and a, a whole completely different thing. I'm like, whoa, mm-hmm. that that threw a Molotov and that, I'm like, okay, that's got to get sorted out. So keep stuff like that in mind. Now, jokes aside, with the command line stuff, or I, I fully understand, I fully understand. I have in the back, like in this rack, out on a shelf, there is a Raspberry Pi 4, 8 gig, living its best life. <laughs> but I never thought about installing a desktop on it. And in my brain, needs, <laughs> and I know perfectly well, I do. That is more than capable of running light desktop duty and stuff like that, right? Not just light desktop. It also mm-hmm. does very good if, say, you have a gaming device that runs a Yay. Raspberry 4 with 4 gigs of RAM. And yes, it plays games all the way up to the PSP without... PSP, Nintendo 64, without even batting an eye. Uh, it's uh, it it's a very good um, like entry-level device because there's a lot of documentation out for it, and it does teach you a great deal many things about how you can get started on both the software and the hardware side because hacking is very much encouraged. Uh, how to get started with computing. Though, to the point of a GTK3 and Mutter, it's like, okay, yeah, the CPU and the GPU on the Pi 4, pretty good. But they're not exactly massive powerhouses. Well, you gotta start. You gotta start somewhere. I've said this before in the show when the first Pi came out. It was the the Planet of the Apes. We're all around it, playing with it, trying to get and We finally got X to, like, chug its way through. That was last time. We're like, it did it. Because we, we we're looking at the future, you know. I'm not concerned about what's going on with the quad core Pi 8 gig right now. It's like the next one, the next one's going to mm-hmm. be because mm-hmm. I, I firmly believe, you know, just uh, XKCD extrapolating. Um, of course, the next one's <laughs> going to be so much more powerful. Um, we're going to have like legitimate desktop replacements because the Pi 4, as powerful as this, it's not as powerful as a Dell. 30, 10, a 10 year old or 12, 13 year old <laughs> no, Optiplex. Like these are butter robot mm-hmm. machines that run these two boxes. They have just enough power to get into Debian. They're running Debian 11, ironically enough. Uh, <laughs> launch a web browser and run an audio, uh, IP audio system in the background to connect to this box over here. That's it. I can't quite pull that off just yet. Not quite. But I think the next one will. So these would be going by. And that'd be uh, awesome. Not even the audio bits? Because, okay, the video, it's it's got to run through a it's browser. The web it's RTC, RTC. Then it's dealing with yeah. the overhead of having the um, <laughs> capture card plugged into it because that's going to be coming in over the right, yeah. right, right, right. And it's right. got to keep all that. Now, the Pi 4 is a step in the right direction because it's got dedicated Ethernet, which mm-hmm. it, there's like time because there's fiber optics connecting these things too. Um, reasons, stuffs, but I have. I have, I'm Ford vision. And so the more desktop stuff to my point, Pedro is like, they, they got to start working on it now. You don't want to wait until it. Yeah. But open box, <laughs> open box and LXD are really good because they give you a yeah. desktop recognizable as a desktop. Did you see the tiling With windows manager for usage. iOS? No. Mm, 
I saw a screenshot of it on a video. <laughs> <laughs> also, um, I mean, eh, I guess See, I post if, the stuff even Windows the is doing. And <laughs> <laughs> I guess if even Windows is doing like some sort of automatic window tiling, then I guess Apple wouldn't want to get left behind. I don't know. Come on, man. How about this? There it is. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Amethyst. I don't know. I just thought I'd bring that up. I thought it was kind of unexpected. <laughs> Listen. I, I, I'm pretty sure that constitutes heresy in uh, Apple land, but okay. <laughs> after, after I fought off the initial reaction of what? It's like, oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. I understand. Listen, man, our brothers and sisters in iOS land, um, they, they, they need some tiling in their lives too. So. If you two are yeah. a captive Apple user, that that there is help you can That's find out. There. Maybe you're stuck in a work Mac and you're like, oh, I can only watch this thing whoosh in and out one more time. <laughs> can I feed it through the shredder? No? no. Okay. <laughs> so, one thing we promise not to do is uh, feed any of your feedback through our shredder, but we can't promise anything <laughs> on the side of the spam golem in my get you. Mm-hmm. The spam golem is very much doing its job but if you'd like to test your luck and uh, your test might your against might. our particular golem yes uh you can go to linkscapecast.com you hit the contact button it will present you with a page that has some caveats at the top and a form that you gotta fill in at the bottom just pick lwdw to send a message over uh, this way and we shall yeah we shall address it unless we can find the answer on the first page of google <laughs> that's your one <laughs> caveat right there well, I mean, yeah. just save some time man like uh don't, don't don't try to like slide in you know through a side channel attack be like hey i'd like to just have a com- come have a conversation don't don't like that oh yeah yeah the irc is free we're uh we're monitoring it's linked it's bridged to we, this we have advanced and to Twitch chat. technology courtesy of um strider and md we our irc yep. our discord and uh <laughs> twitch are all linked together in real time in chat so so it's uh Yay. linux gamecast pound linux gamecast on libera no chat pound linux Just game join us there or no you know pound. <laughs> <laughs> we don't judge <laughs> you I mean, we do, but terror we do it and violence <laughs> quit pounding things <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, we did actually get a bit of a um, reply after last week's uh, very inflammatory episode, I suppose. Uh, Kenji is like, Gnome's, uh, he's addressing about the Gnome System 76 Hit piece. bit. Yes. Uh, and mm-hmm. it's like, the LVS and FWUPD quote unquote drama that the post, the Gnome post, tries to conjure misses one critical piece. After System 76 made their concerns known, these concerns have been addressed by the project and they have a good working relationship now with it. Uh, it is not that they made their concerns known, which would have been fine, uh, and used it regardless of these concerns. After all, do we not all use some things we think could be better? Uh, but uh, he says, I don't want to trigger the old golem, the spam golem, uh, but this can be <laughs> verified on Twitter. Much love, Kenji. And yeah, it, that is, see, that that wouldn't allow that particular GNOME developer to make the points that he did in such a whiny little post. That wasn't meant to be reasonable, clearly. <laughs> It was meant to be as one-sided as possible and to make Gnome, in his eyes, look better than System76, which didn't work like that. Well, at the end of the day, I mean, <laughs> when you're dealing with an open source project, uh, it's a collection of people and you can have, um, everybody's got different opinions. Like one on one way, I respect the Gnome project for that level of freedom for the people who work on it. Like, hey. Mm-hmm. I, I want to say what's mm-hmm. up, and I'm like, all right, that's uh, go for it. Um, Don't put it on the official blog, maybe? Just, yeah, yeah. by all means, <laughs> go to your own personal blog, post it there, have no repercussions because you're voicing your opinion, as you should be able to. Just don't put it on the official blog. <laughs> Just maybe work on, like, staying classy. Um. <laughs> maybe put it on Reddit instead. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, go on Reddit okay. like yeah. everyone else. <laughs> I mean, or just do what I do. 
when you see internet drama, just sidestep and just keep going. Like, nope. Yeah. Uh-uh. <laughs> I got better stuff to do in my life. Well, everyone. I like that initial impact. I do. The, like the initial impact of the internet drama is like, you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I, 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 <laughs> Pedro I, likes the drama llama. <laughs> Just the initial bit, because I don't stick around after yeah. everyone's done talking and they kiss and make out, make up, whatever. I don't, yeah. I have to uh, the, because I don't do the outrage on the internet when I see something like that. I'm like, geez, okay, fine. This is going to take half a day to do proper <laughs> research to find out what the real thing is going on here. Because no, everyone always presents know, their I'm side of the best the case. I'm just watching the soap opera. I don't care. Yeah, exactly. You're part of the problem. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful people we gotta bounce out of here we're gonna roll some credits uh stick around look for your name in them there Aww. there I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring us some music look at that cool. and i got a credits button watch Boop. here it comes thank you cinema Me- metro for the follow as well as uh dream traveling Ooh, i love that username dream traveling that's nice <laughs> Oh, I, I see what's going on there. List of dreams. <laughs> Steve Husband <laughs> says, great so. <laughs> he meant show. <laughs> no, no, that says great sow. That's, it's, no, it, it is it a does. mighty pig. Yes. <laughs> and Mir's posting uh, awesome uh, drama llama <laughs> pigs for Pedro. <laughs> oh, that was funny. <laughs> I, I, I do oh, like me, like patrons. that initial hit of drama yeah. I do and then I'm done with it it's like oh, I'm <laughs> and then out. you're like no I'm out <laughs> y'all deal with it now. that's a little different because the only the joy I get is I watching generally these avoid things it. chatter around I'm like alright I'm bored with that next yeah. we'll see you next week <laughs> next <laughs> bye <laughs> bye everyone <laughs>